So, uh, Notting Hill Housing Trust works exclusively in London uh, in the GLA area and we've been in existence for 50 years. We had our anniversary last year and we're big players in the shared ownership market which John just spoke about. So, um, ideas for London? Here are mine. Um, London is now officially the most expensive city in the world. It got in front of Tokyo last year. So that's nice to know if you live here on a, on a low income. The, uh, nowhere is this more evident in the price of housing. The average house price in London today, does anyone know how much it is? <laughs> it's just short of half a million, £460,000 for the average property in London. And the average wage, uh, Christian said it's, it's 30 grand a year, I believe it's 35 500, but that takes in account the bankers and so on as well, and all their bonuses and everything. So, uh, certainly in my organisation, the low paid people are getting between 20 and 25 grand a year. Take that after tax, times it by three. Is there anything on the internet for 100 grand? No. So, that in a single sentence really sums up the crisis for me here in London. When I first came here, and I'm nearly as old as Christian, not quite. <laughs> well, wow, we're, the, we're the wise greybeards of London. Um, so, uh, when I first came here, on an ordinary salary, you could buy a home in London. It wouldn't be the most salubrious, but you could do it with that three times income. You could get a mortgage and you could house yourself from your own resources. And I've got five children and they cannot do that. They need support and help from the so-called bank of mum and dad, which I just hate that. I hate that word. It's really, really scary. Um, and that is the <coughs> situation in London today. And it's not surprising that the young readership of the Evening Standard and the young campaign organisers of Christian's campaign are pushing this to the top of the agenda. And I even heard Boris say, housing is the number one issue for my constituency. And I'm really pleased to hear that because I'm in the business of providing housing that people are beginning to understand that housing is the number one issue mm -hmm. in London. On the Ipso Mori polling, housing is like 3% in general elections. Not of great interest to people, but it is if you haven't got one. I'd, I'd put it that way. If you haven't got housing, it becomes absolutely crucial. And uh, the number 51% of London's, London's people living in the rented sector, and actually in the PRS, a quarter of the people in the private rented sector have got a family. And I think this is really, really worrying because it's fine to be in the PRS at the early stages of your career or if you're moving through London on your way to a job in Perth or something, I mean Australia rather than Scotland, but you know, that's fine for people like that. But if you're trying to bring up your family and get kids into school and build links in a community, the PRS is not where you want to be, not in terms of stability and security as other speakers have mentioned, but it's not the place you want to be either in terms of its price. Christian just said, 60% of your income going on your housing, what does that mean to the rest of your life? It means you're living on beans on toast, you're not having any foreign holidays, you're not really having a great social life, but you are surviving in London. And I know a lot of people in that category. But clearly, if you're not building up any wealth either through shared ownership or any other kind of owner occupation, it's not very good for the country either, because in old age, those people have no resources they will have nothing in the way of pensions, they'll have nothing in the way of uh, a capital asset from which they can pay their care costs. So quite apart from all the reasons that Christian mentioned about the housing benefit bill costs and so on, it also doesn't make sense in a country which has been dominated by home ownership for many years to have a whole range of older people in the PRS because they will be dependent on the state in old age, whereas owner-occupiers have got some bulwark against poverty in old age. Um, so, we had two options previously for people, home ownership in London, and of course the social rented sector, which is a great sector, and our rents are very reasonable, and we give very good long-term security to people, great places to bring up your families. However, both these sections are now becoming uh, less and less available. Uh, people are living much longer in social housing. When I first came to London, people would die if they were 
from working class backgrounds in their 60s or early 70s. And now people are living till their 80s and 90s. Many, many of our, of our homes are lived in by people in increasing old age, which is great, but there is very little turnover in the housing stock. We're getting 2 or 3% back each year from people dying. Very few people are moving out of social housing into owner occupation because it's just not possible. So the, never mind right to buy and general asset management that's going on, we're losing uh, a lot of turnover from the increasing age of our tenants. So what's the solution? I think more home ownership and more social rent and a good PRS for the short term need. More owner occupation, I'm afraid we are looking at more shared ownership. I don't think it's great to be a shared owner because you only own part of your home, but in a situation like this, it is one of the few solutions. We're finding our product incredibly popular with people. They're queuing up for it. But it's becoming very difficult to build affordable shared ownership in places like Wandsworth, Hammersmith and Fulham. It's absolutely impossible in Kensington. We are really looking now at the outer London boroughs because of the very high costs of land. More social housing will require phenomenal amounts of money. Even though 1.2 billion sounds a lot, a social unit will take about 120,000 pounds of subsidy to produce one. It's really, really expensive. So although I'm all for it, I think you have to be pretty realistic how much of the mayor's money is going to be available for housing. How else can we produce resources? Well, my solutions, if I might uh, offer some at this point, are to use the wealth of London to meet the needs of London. London is one of the wealthiest places on the planet. We have such wealth here in housing, in land, and in public buildings. And we should be using some of this to help house the people <coughs> who are badly or too expensively housed. The land that is in the ownership of the mayor is quite immense. The land that is owned by the prisons, by the health service, by TfL, all of this land should be looked at now as a resource for meeting London's housing needs. To me, there is absolutely no excuse for what is called Greenbelt, a lot of which is scrubby land, you know, that is just unpleasant. And if you were able to build housing around it, then the green comes to life and people can use it to play on and enjoy themselves. We really need to consider the land question here in London in a very much more active way. We need to look at the council estates of London, which are largely not very attractive. Some are super, but some are really foul. We've just won the opportunity to redevelop the Aylesbury estate in Southwark. Eventually, those buildings will be knocked down, but on that site, we will build twice as much housing. All the social housing is replaced, but equally, we produce a lot of private housing, which funds the whole redevelopment. And most council estates in London, which have outlived their value, have sufficient value in them to produce more housing, to double the amount of housing in them. The inbuilt value of social housing, we're selling off some bedsits in K and C, which social tenants will not take, and we are buying three and four bedroom ha homes for people in the suburbs. That gets uh, a, a, an increase in quantity from one to about six or seven. So we can house seven families where we previously could only house one person, active asset management. Um, the use, the strict use of section 106, completely agree with the previous speakers. We're astonished. We used to get half of our program through section 106. Now it's less than 10%. All the boroughs and the mayor have rolled over, over this point about we can't do it anymore. It absolutely can be insisted on in London mm -hmm. and I believe it must be. Overall, I think there needs to be a huge pro-development campaign in London, and I see the mayor as gripping that and leading it, creating an atmosphere where people want more homes, where people don't turn up at planning committees and say, no, not in my backyard, that people say, you know, we want more homes for our children, we want more homes for our employees, we want more homes because we don't have them. Can we harness that view in London of people to promote and suggest that there is growth in the housing supply. It's only when we get a lot more homes that the price will become more reasonable. The issue in, in England as a whole, where house prices have gone up significantly more than wages over a, cons a considerable amount of time, is the problem that we have. And that will only be resolved, in my opinion, when we get masses more housing of all sorts. And nowhere do we need that more 
than in London. Thank you.